In this video, I'm going to show you how to add Dask and Jupyter to an existing Kubernetes cluster. I wrote a blog post on this very topic as well as I created another video to walk you through uh, those details. So um, please check out either the post or the video if you'd like more uh, details. Um, I'm going to assume in this video that you already have a Kubernetes cluster launched and I am working on AWS, so I'm going to assume that as well. Um, I'm on OSX, so I'm going to uh, assume that you're using Homebrew and you already have that installed. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install Helm. And Helm is a the Kubernetes package manager. It's the official one. Um, so we're going to make use of that here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install it. And you're going to see an error because I already have um, installed Kubernetes Helm previously. So if, if you need to, you can upgrade Kubernetes Helm. And the first thing you'll notice is that I get an error because I already have the latest version. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to initialize Helm. And you're gonna get a lot of information. Um, it already says Tiller is already installed in the cluster because I just did that prior to launching this video. Um, but the, the standard message you're gonna get is Tiller has been installed on the, uh, the cluster. Okay, so Helm has its own repo update. Um, you can check out um, Kubernetes charts if you'd like to know more details about um, the various applications that are out there. I've provided the link in the blog post. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna update Helm. Okay, that happens very, very quickly. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Desk. All right, so we're gonna get an error. And the first time I did this, I panicked a little bit because I thought this was supposed to be very, very simple um, because there's no useful information here. Like there, there's nothing I see there that makes me go, oh, this is how I'm gonna fix it. So actually how I ended up diagnosing the problem is I did Helm list. And then you're gonna see config maps is forbidden and you're gonna see uh, an error uh, regarding the cube system namespace. So after a bit of sleuthing, um, there's actually a Stack Overflow post as well as the R RBAC, so role-based access control. Um, both of these links in the, in the blog post give quite a bit of information on what's going on and how to fix it. But the bottom line is we have a few lines that we're just going to blindly run and everything will be fixed, okay? So you're gonna see that Tiller has been upgraded to the current version, which is pretty similar to the first, um, the first message we re received. So now we're gonna run the same command as before. So in the blog post, I had um, the, the name of my um, uh, config was running newt and that's automatically generated by the Kubernetes cluster. So we're gonna do that here. And what you're gonna notice is that was very, very fast. Okay, so let's scroll up a little bit and look at some of the details. So while in the blog post, it said running newt, you'll see now that it's a dandy wasp and every time you do this, you're actually gonna see a different name. And one thing you're going to notice that there's a load balancer for the Jupyter, um, the, the Jupyter server, if you will, and there's this, uh, also a scheduler. So there's two different load balancers. And if we go to EC2, I actually already have this screen up from the previous video. Um, in the previous video, we had one load, load balancer, and now what you're gonna see is there are two more load balancers. Okay, and let's go back to our command line. Um, there's a variety of different uh, environment variables you can export and like. Uh, when you're working with AWS, that becomes a little bit difficult. Uh, not everything is as simple as this says, but one thing that is very useful to note is because it's easy to overlook, is it says the default password to log into the notebook server is Dask, D-A-S-K and we're gonna make use of that in just a moment. Okay, so moving on, um, we're going to use Cube Control, which is a tool that we installed in the previous video, and we're gonna look at the services. And so one thing you're gonna notice is there's an external IP. And this guy, these two correspond to the load balancers we looked at just a moment ago. In particular, you're gonna see the one ending in Jupyter, and there's a, a few ways to do this, but I'm gonna look at one. The external IP starts with A70D8, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna come over here 
to 870D8, and we're going to see this DNS entry. Okay, and if you look in the post, what it's talking about is it's describing exactly what I just said. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, to that server in the browser. And you're going to see, hey, there's a, a Jupyter um, a prompt here. So remember the password was D-A-S-K. I'm going to log in. Okay, I'm going to tell uh, Chrome, never mind. And you're going to see, okay, we have a, uh, not only do we have um, a Kubernetes cluster, it was very, very simple to install both Dask and uh, Jupyter. So the, the blog post actually walks you through quite a bit of information about how to customize your Dask configuration and how to, if you only want Dask and you don't want Jupyter, it tells you how to do that. But what I want to show you is that there's actually quite a bit of stuff you can, you can see, um, uh, notebooks that are already uh, generated. So if you go into the examples folder on Jupyter, um, one thing you'll notice if you just double click you'll see that in Jupyter Lab, you'll see that there's various code that's already been um, provided by the, the uh, Dask folks. And this is just a standard notebook, so we can run this code, right? And then we can um, just run through it very, very quickly. So it's useful that we didn't have to actually set up anything. Um, it was already done for us. Now, one thing I wanted to draw your attention to before we close out this video is that if you've ever set up Dask uh, and you have not used a, uh, a cluster tool like Kubernetes, this might actually be a little bit challenging, but because we are using Kubernetes, everything has been set up for us. You'll notice that we have three workers here, a total of 12.4 gigs of memory and six cores, and the scheduler is already set and the dashboard is uh, available. Um, there's quite a few interesting notebooks in this collection. Uh, the one I actually find pretty useful is the NYC Taxi, because it talks about reading a, um, a data frame from S3 with pandas, and actually how to do that with Dask, and paralyze the, um, the, the runtime. 